Okay. Hello, and uh, welcome to my class. Data-Driven Methods in Dynamical Systems. Uh, so this is a graduate course I'm teaching at the University of South Florida. And uh, yeah, I am posting all the lecture videos here online. Um, so uh, if you're a random person coming in from YouTube, hello and welcome. And uh, if you're one of my students, well, it's going to be a pleasure to work with you guys. Uh, communication here uh, is going to happen mostly through email and uh, or uh, YouTube video links if you're not one of my students. If you are a student, please do uh, use email. I, I, I'll get back to you a lot faster that way. Um, but yeah, but let's talk about some of the things we're trying to do in this class. So this is, uh, like I said, it's data-driven methods and dynamical systems. And so uh, the idea is that uh, we are dealing with data. So we have observed uh, a system moving through time. This is a time series data set. And we'd like to be able to uh, extract information for a bit. And what some people call is extract governing principles. And so in order to find these governing principles, we have to use data-driven techniques. So, uh, first of all, we need to figure out how we're going to encode the data. Uh, this can be as individual snapshots or as uh, uh, integrals of trajectories, which is sort of my personal take on it. After that, we can use all sorts of tools like the SVD, PCA, uh, dynamic mode decomposition, and all these other things in order to get uh, so the really important bits of the data and discard uh, things that are actually not that statistically relevant. And, uh, and so uh, this is uh, what the class is all about. It's going to be, we're going to talk about problems and control theory and fluid dynamics and differential equations. And, and in order to start with all that, uh, we need to go back uh, to some basic linear algebra stuff. And we're going to talk about the SVD. Uh, we're going to be using this textbook. Uh, it is Data-Driven Methods in Science and Engineering. Did I get that right? Yep. Or Data-Driven Science and Engineering. And it is uh, by Stephen Brutton and uh, Nathan Coots. Uh, now, uh, this is an excellent textbook. Uh, it goes over all sorts of different data-driven techniques, that not just for time series data, but for classification and other things like that. And we'll go through the, a lot of that stuff too. We'll get through about half of the book, and um, we'll talk about uh, the SVD and, and use his uh, discussion as a springboard to various topics around the SVD, uh, including uh, things like, uh, you know, extracting information from images and doing approximations of the image with SVDs. And we'll also talk about the fast Fourier transform out of the same textbook. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, uh, the general theme for a lot of that stuff is how do you choose a good basis for your analysis? Uh, so with Fourier methods, you can choose, uh, you know, uh, sine and cosine and things like that. Um, but for data-driven methods, SVD gives you a way of extracting a basis straight out of your uh, your data. And so um, so th there's a whole variety of different ways of doing this. And, and then there's a, my my own field in reproduced kernel Hilbert spaces, uh, generally speaking, you try to build a basis out of kernels in one way or another, uh, usually using data points as uh, centers uh, in, say, the Gaussian reproduced kernel. Um, but there's lots of different ways of going about this, and uh, and so we'll we'll go ahead and explore a lot of them uh, following uh, this textbook. One thing that's nice about this textbook uh, is that you won't only have my lectures to go on. Uh, Stephen Brunton maintains an, an actually a very excellent uh, YouTube channel, uh, one that I feel very competitive with. Um, but I think he's winning because I think he has a thousand times the subscribers I have. I think he's broken into uh, 115k right now. So if you're watching this video, go ahead and subscribe and. Uh, and maybe we can end up beating him too. Uh, academics uh, and competitiveness, uh, right? So anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, in the latter half of the class, we're gonna talk about stuff that nobody else knows about in the world. Uh, this is uh, stuff around uh, where I call control level operators, scale level operators, uh, level weighted composition operators, and, uh, and other things like that. They are all used uh, to get uh, nice convergence for things like dynamic mode decomposition, which isn't really possible with anything else out there. I, now, I, so I, my, my work recently has been trying to find different ways of uh, doing dynamic mode decomposition uh, that are also uh, theoretically well-founded, whereas a lot of uh, methods out there uh, really just use it as a, a good heuristic, and, and they work. They, they do fantastic jobs. I'm not saying my, my stuff does fantastically better, but 
we're working on it and, and maybe one day we will get there. Uh, but you'll learn about all these new tools uh, in the latter half of the class and it does enable a lot of really cool new things like how to take a uh, higher order dynamic mode decompositions without augmenting a state variable. Generally speaking, if you have to augment the state variable uh, in a data context, that means you actually have to uh, take numerical derivatives, which are horrible. You never want to take that. And so, uh, so I'll give you my personal perspective on this and I'll show you all sorts of different cool ways that you can avoid doing things like numerical differentiation uh, by using some kernel functions that uh, me and my colleagues have been uh, pushing hard on. Uh, anyway, so uh, all this material in this class, uh, if it's anything that I've uh, been working on, uh, it's, it's all happening in collaborative effort. Uh, so um, you can find my uh, lab website uh, here. And, um, and this is stuff I'm doing with Rishikesh Kamalapurkar, Benjamin Russo, Taylor T. Johnson, and my wife, L4 Screws Rosenfeld. Uh, and so I, I, I'm happy to share all this stuff with you. I'm excited to be able to teach this class uh, because I've been wanting to put this up on YouTube anyway. And so, uh, so yeah, uh, so welcome. And uh, this week we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, before I let you guys go, uh, at the very end of this video, I'm gonna give you two videos. Uh, they're also linked in the description uh, that are uh, unlisted on my website, uh, but they uh, give you, what, there are two different research talks. One I gave last week at the joint mathematics meetings and another one that I gave at a workshop uh, that I um, organized with Rishikesh Kamala Porkar uh, at the ACC 2020. Uh, so uh, these two talks will give you an idea of what you're going to be see what you're going to be seeing later in this class, uh, mostly in the latter half, and um, and then uh, yeah, and so uh, this week I will be working on uh, lectures for the singular value decomposition and give you my personal take on that, uh, which I hope is going to make it easier to progress from. Uh, the singular value decomposition of matrices to singular value decompositions of compact operators. Uh, and so um, that should be uh, really exciting to go ahead and do. Uh, all right, so uh, rather than keeping you guys forever, uh, I'm gonna let you go and, uh, and yeah, go watch those two videos and I'll be back with more uh, this week. All right, uh, and thank you for watching.